This is an honest and unbiased review of the new Warpaints Fanatic. If there's one thing that the army painter is good at, then it's generating buzz on social media. We have quality up here. The perfect paint being the best we can make him. The best paint in the world. The best paint in the world. The best paint in the world. But I found that the quality control can be hit or miss. Over the last couple of years, I tested all major miniature paint ranges, so I have a really good idea of what an acrylic paint can do these days. I tried all 260 colors of the new range and I'll tell you if the army painter can live up to the promises. I'm Starly from Tale of Painters and this is the truth about War Paints Fanatic. I reviewed so many paint ranges over the years and I see a trend. I think the paint quality has improved significantly over what we used in the hobby 10 or 20 years ago. It started with Pro Cruel, an AK 3rd Gen, two thin coats and the new Vallejo game colors followed suit along with all the Kickstarter paints. For me, all of these ranges represent a new generation of miniature paints and now the army painter wants to catch up with the war paints fanatic. And perhaps they had to catch up because the old war paints range didn't have a good reputation among many painters. Often you'd get a paint with the dreaded issue where only transparent medium came out of the bottle while the pigments had settled at the bottom into a thick gunk. The army painter made videos on how to fix this and started to include agitators in the bottles for better blending when shaken. But in my experience, affected paints would separate again and again no matter what you do, which was simply annoying. All of this is supposed to change now with a brand new War Paints Fanatic, which the Army Painter has been working on for several years. We have 300 to 700 percent more pigment in, we have a new stabilizer developed, and we have a higher quality resin base. They even claim the new War Paints might probably be the best paint in the world. In this video, I go through all the acrylics, effect paints, washes, and metallics and find out if that's true. But first, I want to take a look at the color palette, because the army painter decided to do something really unique here. There are 162 acrylics, 18 metallics, 18 washes and 18 effect paints, which will be available individually or in various sets launching in early 2024. This is more colors than the Siddal color range and makes them one of the largest paint ranges on the market. But what I find really ingenious is the flexible triad system. This means that each color comes in six shades from dark to light in a consistent hue. The idea is that you can layer or blend without having to mix intermediate tones or you can simply pick a dark, light and mid-tone and combine them as you see fit. I absolutely love this and I think it's very intuitive for beginners while advanced painters will appreciate the choice. However, there's also a massive flaw to the system and I'll address it later when I get to the individual colors. I really adore the color palette, lots of rich and vibrant tones and I love that there are so many pinks, turquoise and teal colors. The only thing I find lacking is the more yellowish olive green tones, there's really only tundra top. Additionally some warm rust and golden brown tones like scrag brown or mournfang brown from Games Workshop are also missing. Now the actual paints come in the familiar 80ml dropper bottles like all army painter paints. Two mixing boards are included, which is good, and each label is printed with a graphic indicating which triad the color belongs to. There's also a practical color description based on the ISCC NBS system of color designation. In terms of pricing, individual bottles will be $4.25 or €3.50, so almost as pricey as a pot of Citadel color. Though, war paints will have 50% more paint compared to the 12ml pots of Citadel. I've acquired a complete paint set with all 260 colors and tested each one. Let's take a look at the metallics first. Now I would say I have a special relationship with the army painters metallic paints. The first generation war paints, which you can recognize by the old label with the paint splatter graphic, had excellent metallics. The composition reminded me strongly of the brilliant metallic paints from the 2000 Citadel color range, namely Bolt Gun Metal and Mithril Silver. I really enjoyed using those. However, when the war paints range was expanded, the metallics changed. Although the army painter continued to advertise them as the best metallics, I found the coverage and grain of the metallic flakes only average. Not bad, but more 
average. With the war paints fanatic, the army painter claims that the best metallics have now become even better. The formula has been completely reworked based on the experiences with the metallic speed paints. Instead of mineral mica flakes, war paints fanatic now feature finer and more opaque aluminium flakes. There are 18 colors in total, including 12 colors taken from the old range and 6 new ones like Mithril, Cobalt Metal and Dark Emerald. Let's put them on a model. Here you can see how I apply both the old and fanatic plate mail metal next to the original first gen paint. Can you already see a difference in consistency? I would say the old version has significantly coarser metallic flakes and doesn't cover that well. Now the Fnatic version is quite thick but it thins down nicely and goes on super smoothly and covers very well even when diluted with water. And here you can see the dry paints in comparison. The original first gen plate mail metal, the current war paints version and the new Fnatic plate mail metal. I really like the finish of the Fnatic version, how about you? Here's another comparison with Greedy Gold and Retributor Armor from Games Workshop. What do you think? For me, the finish is pretty much identical. Can't see much of a difference, which I think is great, because Retributor Armor is one of the best warm orange gold paints. I also tested all the other new metallics and they are all quite fantastic. The silver ones are the standouts, but even the gold and bronze colors only need two, maybe three thin layers for perfect coverage and have a beautiful metallic finish. That's a significant improvement over the predecessors from the old war paints range. I give the Fnatic Metallics 9 out of 10 points. The only thing I can criticize is that the paints are quite thick and I would have liked more bronze and copper colors. Compared to other non-alcohol based products on the market, I would say the Army Painters new metallics are up there with the best. Here you can see Vallejo Model Air Steel, which is the best bright silver paint I ever used and the new myth wheel from the Army Painter comes pretty close. The only difference is the viscosity. The Fnatic metallics are all quite thick and need to be thinned, while the Vallejo metallics are airbrush paints and pre-thinned but work well for brush painting too. Alright, that's a good start for the Fnatic range. Next, let's take a look at the quick shave washes. These are quite popular and while the army painter says they haven't changed the formula, I say they did. Question is, a change for the better or for the worse? I'll show you. Now I've been using the army painter's original quick shave washes for many years. Yeah, I'm old, truth is I wear the mask to hide all my wrinkles. I used to be a big fan of the first gen Citadel washes from Games Workshop, remember those. When these were phased out and the Citadel shade paints were introduced in 2012, I didn't like the change. So I switched to the Army Painters quick shade washes and dark and strong tone made excellent replacements for Old Barter Black and Devlin Mud. This went on for many years, but lately I've had quite a few bottles that dried quite shiny and gave me slightly blotchy results. Therefore, I switched to the Siddle shades with a new 2022 formula, which I actually really like. Lately, I've also been quite fond of the Pro Cruel washes. So with all my history, I was very curious to see if the washes in the Fnatic range had returned to their old strength. There are four new colors. Orange tone, dark red tone, magenta tone, dark blue tone and rust tone, which means more choice, which I like. Apart from the new colors, the army painter says they didn't change the washes, but spoiler, that's not true. Here you can see how I apply the new dark tone wash on a termagant with a white undercoat. As you can see, the flow properties are very good. The washes seem to be a bit thinner and runnier than the previous versions. But don't worry, the capillary action pulls the pigments into the recesses very well. Here you can see the new strong tone wash and the strong skin wash which also go on nicely. And here are the washes in their dried state. What do you think? I see a very even distribution, even on large flat surfaces and strong shadows. The finish is not matte but satin I would say. I think the result is excellent and the glossiness and inconsistencies that are sometimes encountered with the old war paint washes seem to be gone. Here you can see a comparison with Citadel shade paints which have also given me a good result but have more of a shine and are of course much more expensive per milliliter. So the quick shade washes might not be the same anymore, I think they're even better. I'm giving them a score of 8.5. 
Now we still have the effect paints and of course the 162 acrylics to check out. To be honest, I found the Army Painter's previous effect paints to be rubbish. Let's see if the new ones can win me over. Before we dive into the acrylics and flexible triads, let's take a look at the effect paints. I didn't like the effect paints from the old war paints range, they were just glossy paints, not at all like Games Workshop's technical paints which each have their individual properties. Recently I tested a new Vallejo game color range and their special FX paints didn't impress me that much either. I mean honestly, except for the useless gemstone paints, Citadel technical paints are just hard to beat. Maybe the army painter can do what others can't. Well, there's a total of 18 paints, including varnishes, thinners, fluorescent colors and some special paints. Let's start with those. Now Blood for the Blood God is my favorite blood effect paint. It's just so slimy and gory. Fanatic True Blood comes close, it's similarly sticky and gel-like and the shade of red is spot on. Here is Nurgle's Rod from Games Workshop and its counterpart Oozing Vomit from the Fanatic range is almost identical in color but it seems to have more texture. This is Typhus Corrosion, a greasy dark brown with added particles. The Fanatic range has several rust colors, here is Fresh Rust, a rust orange that also leaves the texture and this is Dark Rust which is closer in color to Typhus Corrosion. Here I'm applying Disgusting Slime which is similar to Oozing Vomit but even more greenish. Verdigris is the counterpart to Nihalak Oxide and Oil Stains creates dark oily streaks. And here are the effect paints when dried. So what do you think? Unfortunately, True Blood is a bit less moist and glossy than Blood for the Blood God when dried, but besides that, the effect paints get a big thumbs up from me. I would give them an 8 out of 10. For me, they might be the first that can keep up with Citadel's technical paints and the War Paints Fanatic range has even more effects to choose from, like ore stains or a couple of fluorescent colors. The 5 Fluo paints are quite solid, they just have a weak opacity like most fluorescent paints do. Speaking of coverage, how about the acrylic paints? Is the coverage really as exceptional as the Army Painters marketing wants us to believe? I have my doubts, but let's find out. As mentioned earlier, lately I've tested Pro Cruel, Two Thin Coats and the new Vallejo game colors, among others, all of which already have very high opacity and a super creamy consistency. But in the videos and on the website, the Army Painter promises unparalleled uniformity in coverage, with 500 to 700% more pigment than other paints, so I wonder if the Army Painter can really top that. We'll see. Let's put some paint on a palette. Look at this consistency. Quite thick, isn't it? Not all, but most colors tend to have a rather thick consistency, quite reminiscent of the former war paints or Vallejo model colors, but the Fanatic formula is creamier and more uniform. By the way, I'm happy to say that the dreaded army painter effect of only transparent medium coming out of the bottle was not an issue at all and seems to be a thing of the past. So, to achieve a smooth application, the paints definitely need to be thinned with a drop of water. Now you could argue that this increases the yield, so more bang for your buck or squid for your quid. Personally, I'm a bit lazy and have gotten used to the slightly thinner consistency of paints like Pro Cruel or Vallejo Game Color, which most of the time can be used directly from the bottle with the added moisture from a wet palette. But that's just my personal preference. How about you? Do you prefer a thinner or thicker paint? Let me know in the comments. Here is a test model, the right side painted with the aforementioned paint brands. For the left side, I'm using the new War Paints Fanatic to give the Termagant the classic High Fleet Hydra color scheme we all know from Space Hulk. And I have to say, once you've thinned the colors to the right consistency, painting becomes really enjoyable. They flow well from the brush, the coverage is high and thanks to the slightly extended drying time they blend well and you don't have to worry about visible brush strokes as the self-leveling properties are quite good. Here's the result, I think it looks quite decent. But how revolutionary is the coverage really? In the promo videos, the army painter implied that many of the lighter colors like yellow and orange would cover almost completely with a single coat. Does that hold true? Let's try it out. 
I'm putting demonic yellow, lava orange and pure red from the fanatic range to the test, comparing them against Vallejo game color moon yellow, pro cruel orange and two thin coats demon red. Here's the first coat of Warpaint's fanatic over a black primer. Since the fanatic paints are quite thick, I had to thin them with a drop of water each, while this wasn't necessary with their counterparts from the other brands. By the way, they also work well with an airbrush, but require a lot of thinning, so you might want to look into the Army Painters War Paints Air Range, which comes pre-thinned and is pretty good. And here's the result after one coat. The War Paints Fanatic colors perform well, but one coat is not enough to be fully opaque. Actually, there isn't a significant difference compared to game color, pro cruel or two thin coats. The Army Painter Marketing debunked. Here's the test base after the second coat. The playing field is still pretty even. By the way, would you fancy a video where, for example, I test all yellow paints from all brands to see which has the best coverage? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss it in any of my reviews. And this is the result after three thin coats. Can you see a clear winner? Honestly, I can't. The yellow and light red from the Army Painter might be a tiny bit more opaque than Moon Yellow and Demon Red, but the difference isn't significant. Considering that yellow, orange and red have the weakest pigments, all brands performed well. After testing all 162 colors, I can attest that the Warpaint's fanatic range is indeed a very high opacity, especially with midtones and darker colors, which even beat the Citadel base paints most of the time. For the lighter tones, my impression is that coverage is on par with Pro Cruel and AK 3rd Gen, which is excellent. However, I feel that the lighter colors in the two thin coats in the new Vallejo game color range might cover just a tiny bit better, but don't get me wrong, it's not much of a difference. The more notable difference is in the finish. Warpaint's Fanatic have a satin finish, similar to Citadel paints. The trend in modern miniature paints leans more towards matte paints, and I've grown to prefer that, but a satin finish has its advantages too. The colors appear deeper and the resistance to wear is slightly higher. What do you prefer, matte or satin? Feel free to write it in the comments. So far so good. However, and I know my videos are full of howevers and buts, however, I got 28 problems with the War Paints Fanatic. But paint quality ain't one. The first thing that bothers me is the color match. Yes, the War Paints Fanatic range is an entirely new paint range with a new formula and a new color palette. Nevertheless, the Army Painter chose to carry over some colors from the old War Paints range. I've painted a random selection of the returning colors on this base. On the left are the old War Paints and on the right are the counterparts from the War Paints Fanatic range. What do you think of the match? I think some colors are quite close, particularly those that are also available as color primer sprays. But overall, the match is far from perfect. I mean, I get it, Warpaint's Fanatic have an entirely new formulation, but then maybe the Army Painter should have cut ties with the old range completely to avoid any confusion. So if your paint scheme is based on a specific old Warpaint's color, I recommend stocking up now while the old paints are still available. Otherwise, the paint jobs in your collection might not be consistent anymore. And the other 27 problems are in fact 27 flexible triads. Well, perhaps not all of them. I know, at the beginning of the video, I said I love the idea. And a lot of the triads are great, for example the vivid blue and the teal one. There's an even distribution of light to dark colors, just as I would expect. But others... I've put some random examples here, do you see what I mean? In my opinion, many of the triads lean too much towards the bright side. I'm missing the darker colors. For some triads it might make sense, for example, you can jump from emerald forest, the darkest color in the vivid green triad, to the darker greens in the deep green triad. But if you only have six olive greens in the range, I would have wished for the darkest tone to be really dark, like Castellan Green or Death Corps Drab from Games Workshop. As you can see here, as a result, the emphasis on lighter tones means that the steps between the individual colors become often rather small. I think for most painters, it won't make sense to buy all six colors per triad. For most triads, you could easily skip every second color. But then, not all flexible triads are balanced in the same way. 
the official chart from the website can point you in the right direction, but it's just a digital reproduction and not always that accurate. So I hand painted all colors on plastic card and photographed them professionally. You can download the high risk chart on my Patreon. I've also got compatible charts for the Citadel range, the New Vallejo game colors and others, so you can cross-reference colors across different brands. But overall, I don't want to sound too negative. Even though some trials might not be ideally composed for my taste, the sheer choice makes more than up for it. The Fnatic range has many beautiful and unique colors that would definitely find a place in my collection. The acrylics are nice to work with and the opacity is high, so they get an 8 out of 10 from me. But don't close the video just yet, I still have some final thoughts plus the best alternatives to the Warpaints range to share. So the truth is, Warpaints Fnatic are probably not the best paints, but they are a very good all-rounder range. The acrylics, metallics, washes and even the effect paints are of a consistently high quality, so I give the whole range a quite solid 8.5 out of 10 points. They might not be a revolution and they have a few quirks that you must be aware of, as I explained throughout the video. But if you're only familiar with the old war paints and or the Citadel paint range, then upgrading to War Paints Fanatic will be a quantum leap. You will notice the difference in quality, even if you don't consider yourself a pro painter and they will make your painting more enjoyable. On the other hand, if you already have paints from what I call the new generation of acrylic paints, then the War Paints Fanatic won't be anything special for you, but they can meet the high standard. For this reason, these are the best alternatives. Fruocrude paints have the same high coverage as War Paints Fanatic and they are also good all-rounders with excellent acrylics, metallics and washes. The difference is that the paints are a bit thinner and don't need to be diluted as much. The finish is also more matte. However, the Pro Crew range doesn't have trites and has far fewer colors, so you'll need to mix more. Personally, I like the acrylics from the new Vallejo game color range a tad better than those from the Fnatic range, because they are more matte, require hardly any thinning and I feel that many of the lighter colors cover a tiny bit better. They are also a bit cheaper. However, the range has less than half of the colors of the Fnatic range and the metallics, washes and special effect paints are not as great as the War Paints Fnatic ones. AK 3rd Gen has a very extensive color palette, but since there are no trites or a similar system, the range can be challenging to navigate. However, there are many natural colors designed specifically for historical models and uniforms and more realistic color schemes. The quality and coverage are excellent and all for a competitive price. But in my opinion, there's only one real alternative to War Paints Fnatic if you only want one range to cover all corners. And that would be Duncan Rhodes Two Thin Coats. You can find out why this range is my current benchmark in this video here on the right. So go watch this next and make the comparison yourself. Hope this was helpful and happy hobbying. <laughs>